Here it is, that glorious moment where you begin programming, if you've never done this before, this as well, a rite of passage. We're going to create what's called Hello World. And it's the starting point of almost every programming language. I'm going to go through this super slow just because I'm going to assume this is your first time doing this before you. We have Qt Creator installed and ready to go. We've already created some very blank Qt and C++ apps just to run them and make sure everything works as expected. If you skip those steps and you hit any issues, rewind and watch the previous videos. Okay, so first things first, we're going to create a new project and we've done this before. You can either go to file now or you can just click this new button on the welcome tab, then click. Now make sure you're in application Qt and go to Qt console application. Put it in any folder you want and give it a name. So this is Qt 6 for beginners. This is lesion number 3-1. Feel free to name as whatever you want, but I'm going to use a standard naming convention that lines up with the tutorial. Build system gets a little bit confusing. In older videos and a lot of other earlier videos, you might have seen using QMake. But today, we're going to use CMake. You may be wondering what the difference between but we're going to cover this in later videos, but QMake is Qt's proprietary build system. And in Qt 6, they're moving away from that to CMake. They're still going to have and support on QMake, but they're no longer going to continue to develop it. So in future versions of Qt, this will start to phase out and eventually go away as they favor to develop using CMake. But you can use whatever build system you want. We're going to use CMake in this tutorial. We don't need a translation file because all of these videos will be in English. And then kit selection, you may see other things, but really what you want is desktop Qt 6. Doesn't matter if it's 6.1 or 6.5 or whatever versions out there now. And just ignore this last little bit where it is GCC 64 bit. This tells you the compiler along with the bit level we're compiling. Most modern compilers should be 64 bit. Then next, and the project management, we're not going to use any source code control, but if you wanted to use, you could definitely set it up and use it here, and then finish. The IDE is going to do a lot of parsing. You will see those green boxes that popped up here. If you had a red one, that means something bad happened and you need to figure it out what the error occur. In such case, the Google really becomes our friend. So in this overall project structure, now you have your project and you can collapse this down. As it's bold, it is the default project. And when we run this, it will run if we go ahead and run it now. Absolutely nothing's going to happen. I mean, it'll show it on the screen, but it doesn't look like it's doing anything in the background. It's actually running. It's just running in what's called an application loop, meaning it's sitting there waiting for instructions. Now, again, let's go into project and run. We've covered this in a previous video. But if you can't get the terminal to run, or if you don't want to run it in the terminal, you uncheck that box. You go to projects run and then uncheck run in terminal. Now, when you run this, it will run in this application pane. You see, we've already got a tab here with our project name. And you could just, if you wanted to click this green button instead of going over here, does the same thing, but you notice how it's still popping open a terminal. Why is that? Well, let's jump out of here. Let's save it. So I'm going to control S on the keyboard, or you can go down and, well, do it. Save all. Let's run it again. Okay, there is no pop-up window. It's just running right here in the IDE. Doesn't really matter which way you do it. Just make sure you understand the difference between these two. I'm going to hit stop. Now, I'm not sure if you noticed, but there's this little guy over here. And if I run this again, it's a green arrow with the bug. It's the same guy here. It's the debug mode. We showed this in a previous video where basically debug is going to go through the application line by line. And when I say line by line, I mean the actual computer code in the background. It's going to line it up to the instructions on the screen. Very slow way of doing it. And it's a little bit more advanced than what we're going to cover. So just as a de facto, I'm going to run these in a terminal and we see that nice actual screen pop up. So let's pick this program apart. We've got our project name. We have the CMake list and let's open and analyze. This is the CMake file. What this does is really tell CMake how to build the application. And a lot of this is going to look like, well, ancient Aryan. But right now, 
just leave it as the default. Basically, what we're doing is, and mentioned, here's in the project, and then here's the language we're going to use in this application. We're going to use C++ version 11. You can switch this to 17 or even 20, whatever you have installed in your OS. But the default on my OS is 11. And then we're going to find packages in case you're wondering what the package it is mentioned really right here. The CMake modules, you can expand that out. This is cute. This is actually what we're importing to build this program. So a simple little program has all of these things that we're relying on. That's what I mean by it's not very easy. And well, most programming languages hide the complexity. And with C++, the complexity is right here in your face. So I'm just going to collapse that up because we don't really need a deep dive in there as of now. The main takeaway here is that executable, we have an executable name and you see this main.cpp. What is this? It is our main file. This is the entry point for our application. And when we check over here, is that file, this is the actual source code. This is C++. Now, if we were going to change this file, she has got this little asterisks next to the file name. That means that the file has been changed. If I save that, you'll see it's going to pass and rescan it. If there's ever a little red box there, that means something bad happens. Let's go ahead and simulate that. I'm going to have some garbage in there and hit, as you see. Oh, there's a problem. Cannot configure because it can't pass it. And when we see it in here, we can see there's a little parser error and it's telling us what we did is wrong. It's expecting the bracket and instead it got some weird text. So I'm going to take that out then again. And this time it'll have a good parse. Now back in our main dot CPP, let's pick apart this application. We haven't include, which is basically C++ as a way of saying, go grab this code that someone else wrote, which is one of these modules. And these are included in CMake list. It's actually right here in core. So we're grabbing the cute, cute six and cute five components core. And we're saying it's required to build this back in our main file here. We're going to use core application. We have int main and some arguments. And I don't expect you to understand what any of this stuff is. Just understand when you see this word here, main, this is the entry point of our program. This is where our program is actually going to start running. And then we have some instructions. So we're saying core application A. We're creating a variable. Just understand we're creating something and we're parsing some information to it, telling it how to create it. Then we're going to return null. And if all of this seems super confusing, don't worry. We haven't covered it. This is just simply the entry point. Really, what we're doing is we're starting our program. We're using code that somebody else written and we're just going to do something with it. So let's go ahead and let's add in some stuff here. You're going to see me doing this from time to time where I'm going to copy off the screen and paste it in. So what are we covering? Hello world. Why? Because this is the starting point in every language. Oh, well, we have the main function. The includes a cute app an exact C make and C make modules. All of these we've covered. Now let's go ahead and add in you debug as well. Special set of classes included output to the screen. And we're going to do this the easiest way possible. Q debug bug has certain functions that we can call a function. We can run and we're going to cover these in depth. But right now we're just going to take a giant leap of faith from the cute info. Hello world. So what we're doing here is we're saying, hey, pick this function, this bit of code. And we're going to show the string hello world. And he knows this little bracket at the end here. And it's at the end of every single line that's denoting it's the end of the statement. If we forget that, well, C++ is going to be very unhappy with us. And you see expecting a semicolon after expression, meaning C++ is smart enough to know that, hey, this is not one expression. It's going to stop reading whenever it sees a semicolon here. So let's go ahead, add that. And now it's smart enough to know that, hey, this is the expression right here. Pretty cool, huh? Now we're going to go ahead and build and it's down here. It's this little hammer and you can also just right click and do it where you can build or see make or deploy. So we're just going to build now click this little hammer and what's happening in the background here is will the compilers running? It's going to clear that out and clean this and then I'm going to rebuild and this is the compiler actually compiling. We've talked about this a little bit where it's going to take our source code here run some things on it or doing a build and then it's running mock meaning the meta object compiler. 
and it's generating those object files based off of our code. Now you notice how there's two object files, but there's only one code file. So what's happening here is mock. The meta object compiler is generating this for us. It's all that stuff that happens in the background magically that we don't even know about. And then the code that we wrote is being generated into an object file. And then the linker comes in and links everything into an executable named after our project name. That's a lot to take in, but really it's pretty simple. It's just going to take all of the code. Compile it, link it, and well create an application that will run the hello world. Now, if you've got some sort of error message on the screen, chances are either you forgot the semicolon. In which case, let's go out and simulate that. So I'm going to try and run this. And you're going to notice it's going to build and it's going to fail and it's going to say something like expected semicolon. After expression, every expression expects a semicolon before return. So it really highlights on the screen what the problem is here. And it even tells you, hey, right here, this little arrow is pointing where the problem is. So we'll just add that in or if you just kind of omitted this. And now let's give it a good build. Notice how it builds. And it may actually run for us. Sometimes this is included in Qt. Sometimes it's not. And we have to add it. I got lucky and it's there. I'm going to go ahead and kill that. Clean this and give it a good rebuild. And I got lucky. It's just going to work. However, when in doubt, you should include what you need. So this is our program and it's entirely hello world. All this thing does is it just simply displays the text hello world. I wouldn't go as far as saying now you're officially a programmer, but hey, at least you've made a program. Congratulations. And I am requesting to like, share and subscribe my channel. I do appreciate that you have visited and watched the video. Thank you and have a nice day. Next video is about implementation of class in Qt.